My name is Andrew Trimble and I'm a sixth grader at Fidel Middle School. My science experiment is solubility of sodium chloride in varying pH solution. I decided to test how much salt, sodium chloride, dissolves in 100 milliliters of different pH solutions. I came up with my experiment by helping my dad, a chemistry teacher, film a video about the solubility of sugar in DL. You can see this video here. I had two hypotheses for my experiment. The first one was that the more acids in the solution will dissolve more salt because acid generally dissolves them. My second one is that the solutions with more acids and bases in them will dissolve less salt because there is more chemicals in the solution. And now I will tell you about how I performed this experiment. First, I gathered my materials and set up the stir plates. Then I poured my salt into the weighing boat and measured them in grams to the second decimal place. And then I measured 100 milliliters of each pH solution. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. And placed them in the separate flasks. Then I set the solutions on to the stir plates and put them or put the magnetic mixers in and set them so they would spin at a medium speed and measure the solution temperature. Then I slowly added salt until it stopped dissolving and then turned the mixers off. Then I measured the salt that was left in the weighing boats and subtracted it from the original amount of salt to find the amount of salt added. Then I entered the data into a table and then repeated the procedure for each solution. Here's a picture of the materials I used in my experiment. Here's a picture of my experiment in action. In this picture, you can see undissolved salt crystals showing that the solubility point is reached. In this graph, you can see the solubility of compounds based on temperature. I chose sodium chloride, the light blue line, because it varies least based on temperature. That is why I chose it as my solute. In this table, you can see my rough data. There is the pH levels, the temperature in Celsius, the volume of solution, um, the starting salt in my weighing boats, the ending salt in my weighing boats, and the total salt dissolved. And now I'll show you a graph of my data. Here on the y-axis, there is the total salt dissolved in grams in each 100 milliliter solution. And on the x-axis is the pH levels. As you can see, there is a nice symmetrical curve to the graph. As you can see in this picture, the low and high pH levels dissolve the least amount of salt, and the middle ones, closest to pure water, dissolve the most amount of salt. For my conclusion, I found that my second hypothesis was correct, that the lower and higher pH levels will dissolve the least amount of salt, and the pH level of 7, pure water, would dissolve the most amount of salt. If I were to do this experiment again, I would run more trials for each pH solution so I can more accurately confirm the data points on my graph. I would also test more pH solutions so I could get a better curve of the data points on my graph. Thank you for joining me, Andrew Trimble, in my experiment, the solubility of sodium chloride in varying pH solutions.